Hey guys, I'm Alex Andrew, author of MCP Framework and Community Manager for Model Context Protocol. Um, some of you may know me as Quant Geek Dev, others know me as Dr. Tuna or Subnormal, um, others know me as Alex. In true Gen AI spirit, I suck at naming conventions. But whether you know me or not, I wanted to make this quick video showing how you can create your own MCP HTTP server using the MCP framework. Now, just yesterday, we got the newest specification of a model context protocol, and the spec stated that we're moving away from server sent events, SSE, at least partially. Um, and instead of that, we're going to have streamable HTTP. So what does that mean? We now get a unique endpoint, the MCP endpoint, that allows you to send JSON RPC requests, basically send post requests, and get answers back. Now, in a second, we're going to take a look at how exactly that works. But let's just get started by creating a server. So the first thing we're going to do is we want to make sure we have the latest version of the MCP framework installed. For that, I'm going to type npm i g for global MCP framework latest. Now, this video assumes you have NPM installed. If you don't uh, and you want a video on that, drop a comment down below. But also, you can probably go to your local LLM or whatever your LLM is and ask it to guide you how to install NPM using your operating system. This is something relatively straightforward and something that an LLM should be able to guide you through. So. Now that we got MCP framework installed, we're going to create an HTTP server. Um, we do this by typing MCP create, and we got to think of a name for our project, right? What are we going to do? And I think a very interesting tool that we can build and something that's been done before, but I still think it's very cool is a unique letter counter, right? Because, uh, and it's a good illustration of why, why MCPs exist in the first place. LLMs have limitations to what they can do. They can't access, you know, they can't start browsing the internet. That doesn't happen by itself. Um, and in order to bridge the gap between LLMs and real world like API usages, we have MCPs, right? They're kind of like the connector, the bridge between an LLM that usually can't, you know, can't even count the letters in a word and a tool, something that is more deterministic and that can allow it to, you know, count the letters, call an API. You can have an MCP turn the lights on and off in your house. You can have it read JIRA tickets. You can have it, um, you know, operate a remote car. You can have it go into Blender and start building all these crazy things. Truly, what people have been building with MCP lately has been insane. Um, so, what we're going to do is fairly simple for the sake of the example. We're going to do MCP create um, unique letter counter server. And this is just the name of a project. This can be anything. This can be potato if you want it to be. And we're going to add the flags for HTTP. We're going to add the flags for course because we want, you know, actually check if uh, before going into production, check if course is something you want to enable. Um, but for my case, I am. And we're going to write port 1337. This is this can be a port of your choice. This is just going to determine uh, what port our server is going to be running on by default. So we hit enter, and the framework is taking care of all the scaffolding for us. If you use create React app or create fast API, um, this is the same, but for MCPs. Um, you can now CD into the unique letter counter server, and we're going to open code. Are we going to open cursor for the white coding crowd in the audience? We're going to open it with cursor. Okay. Uh, this launches cursor into our project. We can see it here. So what do we get when we create a project with MCP framework? Um, we get an index TS which organizes all the MCP server logic. As you can see, it's fairly intuitive to read. And then you get a tools folder where you define all the tools. This has automatic tool registration. So what this means is um, the tool will be automatically registered. You don't have to import it anything. As long as you define, um, as long as you define the tool, 
uh, you should be good. All right, so here we have type HTTP stream already enabled by default. We have our port. So what do we do in order to launch this, right? We've got an example tool. Um, we just go here, we open the terminal, uh, and we write npm run start, and everything is handled magically for us. The server finishes building and starts, and we can already see the logs coming up here, right? It's automatically detected the tools, uh, it's detected the example tool, and it's already running and ready to accept connection. So how can we test this? And this raises a good question, because right now there are no HTTP clients out in the wild. Um, so in order to be able to debug and test your um, servers while we're waiting for the official um, SDK, you can type npx mcp debug. And this should automatically install the MCP debug with um, HTTP transport. This is essentially uh, the model context protocol inspector. You can use it for SSC and SDIO, but uh, we're going to use it with streamable HTTP. And we're going to connect directly without a proxy. Now, um, since we're running it locally, we're going to connect to the local host. And here we can see that, well, not here. Whoops we can see that we're on, my bad. Here we can see that we're on port 1337 as we defined in the index and in our CLI command. So when we go here, we change it to 1337, click connect. And, and here we just have the example tool, right? So when we click test and we run the tool, we're gonna get processed test. And this is exactly what we have uh, this is exactly what we have defined in our tool, right? It just returns a string with whatever message we send it to it. Um, how does this work on the network side? And how is this different from SSE? So if you remember with SSE, when we made a connection, we would get a long living stream, an event stream that we manipulated by sending post messages. So we send a post to the SSE stream and we send many different post requests, but we get all the answers in one single SSE stream. Uh, this works differently now, okay? Um, we're going to click connect and on the right, we've got the network tab. And when we connect to the server, we can see that we're actually sending an initialization, um, initial, initialization request and in the response, we're getting a stream opened. So when we list tools, we're actually getting the response with all the tools in JSON format. This is fundamentally different to how the specification worked before, and this should allow it to work more in serverless environments, or well, PAPES will wait for that, but it allows for scaling. So now when I send test, we're gonna see that we're send sending a payload with a tool call um, to the MCP endpoint, and we're receiving an instant response. So yeah, now all we have to do is wait for other HTTP clients to implement the new protocol, and you should be able to use your tool very simply um, anywhere that supports MCP. And uh, just as a quick uh, bonus, Switching away from HTTP, say you built a server and then you realized, oh, you know, no clients support HTTP yet. What can I do in the meantime? It is as easy as going here and changing the type of connection. So now we've got SSE. We rebuild the server. And we can see that we've got SSE transport listening on port 1337. So yeah, this sums up our quick demo on how to build HTTP servers with streamable events using the MCP framework. Um, I'll see you guys on the Discord server. Uh, peace.